Hello and welcome to the show. Uh, we, I think we're good to go now. We had a uh, Danny Sheehan just lost his internet, but uh, it looks like it might be back, which is a good thing. Yes, it looks like we're in business. So uh, thank you all for jumping over from the other show we had earlier. And uh, so there's two streams this week and we have uh, attorney Danny Sheehan on who has uh, done so many amazing things throughout his career. And I'm really excited that he is involved in uh, trying to have some UAP transparency, which I think is very important these days. And uh, we have a an uh, UAP Disclosure Act of sorts that was uh, proposed by uh, Chuck Schumer that is in jeopardy. And that's what we're here to talk about. Hello, Danny. Greetings, Martin. How are you? Can you, you hear me okay? Yeah, there you I are. Guess. Phew, your internet yeah. crashed. Boy, I'm glad you're back. <laughs> Just you know, a few you, seconds. You, that's you why we're a couple help. minutes late here. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Well, thank yes. you. So, so glad to have you on. Uh, we met at DC in line uh, at the uh, on July 26th. We were there to see uh, David Grush. Uh, you had a much better seat than I did, but at least I got in the door. I was glad to be there. Uh, it was fascinating. That whole day was fascinating. So let's let's talk about first of all, if you would. What the uh, Schumer uh, Act more or less is, what what's involved in it, and then what happened last, I, I think it was last, right around Thanksgiving Day or the day after, it seems like everything kind of, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about what that is and what happened. Sure. Okay. Well, what what the, the Schumer bill is, is it's a proposed amendment, uh, a supplement actually, to the National Defense Authorization Act. The National Defense Authorization Act is a, a an omnibus statute that is passed every single year, uh, just like around December 21st, right before uh, the members of Congress go home uh, for the, the Christmas and New Year's holidays, uh, ending the term of the House of Representatives. Uh, and so that they, they bundle all of the different kind of defense spending all the way from the, the five hundred dollar coffee pots uh, in the officers' clubs yeah. to the you know nuclear powered aircraft carriers and submarines uh, and the F eighteen super hornets that they want to build more of uh, and so what what we had done is we had crafted a statute a sixty four page uh, supplement to go into the thousand page uh, National Defense Authorization Act. That was going to continue the process that has that has been begun over the last couple of years to to take more and more aggressive positions, uh, demanding that the elements inside the American government and inside American aerospace industry uh, come forward with the information that they have about UFOs and about the pilots or or sources of the UFOs and provide that information to Congress because they have been not only withholding all that information from Congress for 75 years, but they've been lying to Congress uh, while they've been lying to the American people about their knowledge of this. Uh, and they have been engaged in, a, in an aggressive program that has been now proven uh, that uh, we've gotten documents through the Freedom of Information Act that have revealed the fact that the Central Intelligence Agency and the Defense Department has had for 50 years or more an aggressive campaign of destroying the lives of people who try to report uh, any of these contacts with UFOs, not only inside the government and inside the military, but even private civilians. Uh, and so that uh, we have been moving steadily, uh, the group of us, that are in what is called the UFO community to try to compel the government of the United States in our democracy to reveal this information, uh, beginning to reveal it to Congress, at least, to, to, to at least reveal the information to our elected representatives, and then to have the elected representatives, in turn, reveal as much of this to our American people as they can uh, without jeopardizing individual means of, uh, you know, doing spying on opponents and and uh, in the means by which they do their work, 
uh, and, and revealing nuclear secrets, you know, about how to build an atomic bomb, you know, that we're not asking for that. What we're saying is, look, you've got, you've got to tell uh, the Congress and the Congress has to tell the American people what it is that's going on here right? and stop lying to us. Now, I became involved in it most recently when Lou Elizondo uh, reached out to me. Lou Elizondo was the uh, director of a top secret uh, Pentagon Defense Department study about the UFO phenomenon that was instigated by uh, Senator Reid, Harry Reid, when he was the majority leader of the Senate. Uh, he he demanded that uh, $20 million, uh, $22 million, uh, actually, uh, $22 million uh, was uh, appropriated to pay for this secret study that was going to be done in an updating of the information about the UFOs. But the, the, bottom, the bottom line is, is that Lou kept running into roadblocks everywhere. Uh, that not only was he being denied the access to the information that he needed to study the UFO phenomena, but he discovered that extraordinarily high-ranking people inside our government were being denied access to the same information, including the head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. There were secretaries of mm -hmm. defense that weren't briefed in. There were presidents that were not briefed in uh, about this issue. And uh, he wrote a letter to a Secretary of State uh, Maddox uh, complaining about this. And his letter was intercepted uh, in, and they refused to present it to the Secretary of Defense. Uh, and so he resigned in protest over this. And he brought with him these three videos uh, that he brought to the New York Times uh, with the support of Chris, Christopher Mellon who was the Assistant Secretary of Defense, uh, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence uh, for the United States Defense Department uh, under both uh, President Bill Clinton and W. Bush. Uh, and the two of them uh, brought this information to the New York Times and the New York Times Board of Editors agreed to publish it. And they did. Uh, on the evening uh, of December 16th of 2017, and then in the morning paper uh, of, the, of December 17th, on the front page of the Sunday <laughs> New York Times, they mm -hmm. published this article revealing the fact that there, there was this top secret program that was going on inside the Pentagon to investigate the UFO phenomenon. While the, UF, while the Pentagon officials it were lying to the public to say, we, we don't know anything about UFOs. They're not real. You know, we've already looked into this. There's nothing going on here. There's nothing to see here. Just move on. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it turns out that they were lying again. Uh, and the New York Times basically called them out on that. Uh, and since that time, December 17th of 2017, for the last five years, you know, that we've been engaged in with the UFO community pushing forward to try to get more and more and more information out about this. Uh, and this bill uh, is, in a sense, the culmination of that entire process that's been going mm -hmm. on since 2017. We got the majority leader of the, of the uh, Senate, uh, Schumer, Chuck Schumer, to introduce this bill. It's completely bipartisan. Uh, you've got uh, not only Marco Rubio uh, from Florida, the re so you got, we're still <laughs> we're up on the hot spot. Okay. All right. Well, you're using the hotspot, but just pay it. Uh, that's where she said it was busy trying to call you as well. So we'll try to continue. Okay. But, um, I might, you know, just keep that 855 number handy yep. and call it back if, if you happen to drop. So that's let's right continue here. on. And I don't even know where we were. I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, good. Were, we were just, we were just talking about the fact that this bill that's been introduced by Senator Schumer uh, with the, the co-sponsorship from uh, Rubio, uh, who is the, the Republican, uh, lead Republican in the Senate Intelligence Committee, and it's got support from virtually everybody uh, except for these four leaders. Uh, the, the head of the House Intelligence Committee, uh, this Mike Turner, and the head of the, the Republican head in the House of the Armed Services Committee, Mike Rogers, uh, and the new uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Mike Johnson, you know, they've joined together in trying to block this. 
Uh, and it turns out that, you know, they're all directly in the pay of the major aerospace industries. The, the, the largest mm. contributor to, to Mike Rogers at the armed services is Lockheed Martin. And Lockheed Martin mm. is one of the companies that's in possession of some of this UFO technology, and they don't want to give it up. Uh, and uh, Mike Turner uh, is, the, uh, is the congressman from the district that has, has a Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, which is the base to which the UFO that crashed in Roswell was taken. You know, so that we, we've got the two key spots where the where the uh, the bad guys in this whole thing uh, that are trying to keep secret their access to this so they can make it into weapons. You know, uh, it's their home home base. Uh, and they these are the two guys that are leading the charge to to stop this bill, uh, to make them have to cough this information up and give it to the intelligence committees of the Congress. Uh, and these guys are betraying their entire obligation as congressmen, uh, not only to the country, but to their responsibilities for chairing these two committees. Uh, the, virtually all of the members uh, of their committees support this bill uh, in both the House and the Senate. Uh, and yet they're digging in and, uh, and, and doing the bidding for these private for profit corporations that are paying for their campaigns. I mean, this is a, a, a crass demonstration uh, of the bribing of these co Congress people, you know, by the aerospace industry to be able to keep this technology. Uh, that's what's happening right here. Now, well, the, the you know, I, it's yeah. to me, you know, I could go on and on, um, you, you know, about what I think about this. But I've I've always thought, you know, the, the campaign contributions uh, the lobby system is important, but when it's used for greed and money and power, yes. it's it's a corruption, in my opinion. Um, yes. So I, I guess I would like to say this. Do you think it's possible that there's some other type of pressure that they're giving besides financial? Do you think that they could be like, we cannot let this secret out. This uh, this is our you know bread and butter or whatever it is that these these major private corporations that have these, do you think there's other pressure they're giving them or do you think it's just financial? Well, it's, it's financial and political in that what, what they've demonstrated in the past and we've proven it is that they have, uh, they have destroyed the political careers and destroyed the professional careers in government of anybody who doesn't do their bidding. I mean, that's been going on now for, for 75 years. Uh, and if, if one wants to see the proof of this, you just go to Richard Dolan's uh, two volumes of his, his book uh, called The UFOs in the National Security State. And they have right there, they have the documents that show the internal documents where the Central Intelligence Agency uh, and the, the uh, elements inside the Defense Department have been consciously destroying the political careers of people who defy them. You know, so this is more than just financial support. Uh, this is threats that they make to people, to their families. You know, this is a this is a criminal syndicate uh, that is functioning here to try to capture and keep secret this information. Now, the 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 people who are the primary uh, people moving to try to get some some public revelation of this information come from within the Defense Department. They're, they're uh, honest, patriotic uh, military people and intelligence people who are fed up with this type of criminal self-dealing that these aerospace industries are engaged in. Uh, and what they're doing is they're bribing, not only that they're, they're hiring the people, offering them hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, as consultants to come over and help support their ability to keep this secret. You know, they've they've uh, they've hired they've hired guys like Jay Stratton. They've hired guys like Travis. They've hired people like and others to come in and just take hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to be on their team to keep this secret. You know, uh, this is a, this is a, a display of the type of corruption uh, that has plagued our our American democratic system. You know, and, and it's been confounded by the United States Supreme Court. Uh, uh, passing the the uh, uh, the 
the case, uh, Citizens United, that allows uh, these corporations to pay tens of millions of dollars to the chair people of these committees uh, to bribe them into protecting their financial interests. I mean, so I mean, this isn't this isn't a program about the corruption of government <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah. But what it's doing is it's coming to it's coming to rest on this extraordinarily important issue that you know, over eighty percent of the people in the country, you know, believe that we and that UFOs are real, uh, that they're extraterrestrial in origin. They believe our government has has gotten uh, their hands on uh, you know one or more of these craft in that they're trying to back engineer the technology to make a weapons system. You know, I mean, it's it's the, the old Sufi saying is that when a pickpocket meets a saint, all he can see are his pockets, you know, and, and that that's what's going on here. Uh, the, these people are corrupting our entire political system. Uh, and now they've they've made their move to capture and keep secret the probably the most important single piece of information that our entire human family could have uh, of the fact that we are not alone, uh, that there mm-hmm. is an, an entire extraterrestrial civilization uh, that surrounds us, that their their people are coming and going from our planet. Uh, and these people in the aerospace industry and some certain element deep within the deep state of our American government are trying to establish confidential relations with these people with these people, much to the detriment of our entire human family. You know, I mean, you, could, you couldn't ask for a more outrageous demonstration of the perfidy of these people. You know, like now Mike Turner and Mike Rogers. I mean, that, uh, that these people need to be removed, uh, you know, that they're, they're being paid. You know, they're, they're basically having cash delivered to them in brown paper bags across their desk in the Senate, in the House, you know, to to protect the financial interests of the stockholders of these private corporations, so that, I mean, that we've got we've got to come to grips with this fundamental problem uh, in this particular bill, which has got virtually uniform support from all the Republicans and all the Democrats in the House and in the Senate, who are not on the payroll of of these private aerospace corporations. Mm are all mm-hmm. in favor of, of turning over the information to the to the uh, at least to the Senate Intelligence Committee and House Intelligence Committees you know and here's the guy Mike Turner who chairs the House Intelligence Committee who's going to benefit from this his whole committee is going to benefit from getting access to this information and he's completely betraying uh, his entire responsibility to function as the chair of this committee you know by taking private money from from these corporations uh you know so this this is uh people should be i won't use the term anymore up in arms because we're not (laughs) not calling people to get up in arms you know we're not asking people to get in the streets with torches and pitchforks you know on these guys but you know this has to be stopped i mean if we have to throw down on these people uh in the context of this particular statute that virtually 99% of everybody in the House and Senate wants to pass, you know, and what they're getting ready to do is they're getting ready to abuse their power by, in effect, threatening the other members of their committees, you know, by threatening to remove them from the committee, to take the the the, uh, the staff away from them. You know, th- this is the kind of threats that they're exercising against the, the members of the, the House and Senate, our elected representatives, to protect their financi- their financiers, these private financiers. And you can bet mm. that Mike Turner and Mike Rogers are just waiting to get permanently and officially employed by these aerospace corporations, you know, that hire them for, you know, tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to come over and, and be lobbyists for them. You know, that's what's mm. going on here. I mean, this is this is a total outrage that's going on. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to talk about... Uh, we're back, basically back to square one. If this doesn't, if this is not part of the uh, Defense Authorization Act, right? I mean, we're just well, no, back no, to- not, not to square one. We've we've made we've made so many advances since uh, since December of 2017. What this is is this is the the 
uh, offensive move that has been made by an alliance between the traditional UFO <laughs> community and the, the people inside the Defense Department and the intelligence community who want to have this information revealed to the people. So we have a coalition that is not going to go away. Uh, and mm. the fact of the matter yeah. is these these guys, Mike Turner and Mike Rogers and, and John, Mike Johnson, you know, they are they are destroying. They're destroying the credibility of our entire democratic institutions here. Where, where you have the overwhelming majority of people in our country wanting to get this information conveyed into the, the Congress, you know, to take it out of the exclusive hands of these private corporations and put it into the hands of our of our elected representatives so they can decide what's to be done about this, you know. Uh, and uh, and these guys these guys ought to be run out of out of town. I agree. I think we should do that. We'll do that ourselves. <laughs> uh, you know, I have a, a couple of questions that came in. Uh, one of them is from a longtime supporter of the show that helps me with a lot of information. Palmer wanted me to ask you this question here. What certainty, percentage-wise, uh, would you put on some of the of this UAP UFO technology being representative of non-human intelligence? And then he had another question after that. Oh, sure. No, no. <laughs> All of this technology <laughs> that's connected to the UFOs uh, is from a non-human intelligence. I mean, that's clearly so. Uh, you know, they're they're not they're not uh, you know capturing UFOs that they made themselves and then trying to keep it secret. <laughs> you know, this is yeah. this is uh, you know it's extraterrestrial. Uh, in in what it, it presents itself, you know, uh, as potentially extra dimensional uh, because, in, in my opinion. Uh, based on, you know, some 45 years of experience in this field, is that it presents itself as appearing to be extra dimensional because of the means by which these vehicles travel. You know, the, the, mm. they, they travel mm. in a realm that, that bends, it warps space time, you know, mm. uh, and that, that accounts for their being able to move at these extraordinary rates of speed, you know, without having any friction. And it also uh, enables them to turn these 90 degree turns going 20,000 miles an hour, you know, uh, and survive, you know, uh, 5,000 G forces, you know, so that, that, yeah. that, that, that this is a technology that is so far beyond uh, anything that any of our, our human civilizations have developed to this point. And that's why these private industries are so rapidly devoted to trying to get control of this because they want to be able to make tens of billions of dollars uh, th sure. for the next 500 years by monopolizing yeah. this technology in the same way that the oil corporations have monopolized petroleum. You know, that that's yeah. exactly what's going on. Yeah, you know, the old saying here, you know, all the way back from the Nixon era was follow the money. You know, it's basically that. Uh, here as well, well it's, here, it's, it's worse than that it's worse because what, what this really is there's an element inside the united states uh, uh intelligence community and inside the u.s military that is devoted to trying to establish full spectrum dominance over the planet we need to understand mm -hmm. that, that that they are functioning on behalf of the major corporations in the united states that they're funding their campaigns. And what they're doing is they're deploying our military, for example, into the Middle East to occupy the Middle Eastern oil fields uh, so that we can maintain the, a private set of contracts that have been negotiated by our government on behalf of the major oil corporations. You know, and that, that's what they're there for. Uh, and they've, they've, they've spent tens of thousands of lives of people, not only in the Middle East, but um, American lives to, to secure control over the petroleum uh, so that they can have a monopoly control over the source of energy on the planet. And they see the, the UFO phenomenon as a threat, as an alternative source of energy that can be provided to the world to help us deal with climate change, to help us deal with poverty, to help us deal with, with uh, a major agricultural uh, uh, services for the people, you know, the, they see this as a threat to their, their monopoly power on the planet. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's why they're willing to go to such extremes of threatening the lives of people, destroying their political careers, destroying their family lives, 
you know, by having people branded as insane who simply mm -hmm. try to, you know, present the information to legitimate authorities about an encounter that they've had with such a UFO. Uh, and they, they send in secret uh, military people to threaten them and their families. You know, I mean, this is this is a criminal syndicate. This is a federal criminal racketeering organization that we're dealing with here. It's a syndicate uh, that's uh, that's made up of these aerospace industries and some of the politicians whom they've bribed. You know, and you're looking right straight at them right now with Mike Turner and Mike Rogers and now Johnson uh, and uh, uh, Mitch McConnell uh, is doing their bidding right now. Hmm. Let's say that this thing did get included and it passed. What would it look like for some of these corporations if they had to fess up? And let me just ask you this too. Yeah. And how could we trust that they would totally fess up with what they have? Well, the, this what we have to do is we have to bring to bear uh, the instrumentalities of our government to extract this information from them. That's why the subpoena power that is in this statute uh, is so important, that uh, this statute specifically provides from Congress the subpoena power to this, this uh, nine-person uh, board that is to be established by this, this statute. Uh, gives them subpoena power where they can issue a subpoena uh, to they, what they do is they apply to the attorney general of the Justice Department to issue a subpoena uh, and to go to federal court and to get the federal district court in the United States to issue a subpoena, a judicial subpoena to these people, mandating that they turn over this information or they will be held in contempt of court, a criminal contempt of court. You know, they can be imprisoned if they refuse to cooperate with our government, you know. Uh, in, yeah, but in, when it comes to corporations, they have protections, don't they? Like because well, it's a corporation, not an individual. Well, no, the, but the fact of the matter is the subpoenas can be issued to the private, uh, the private management of the corporation. They can subpoena the, the CEOs. They can subpoena the chief operating officers. So they can subpoena them and mandate that they exercise their authority to provide this information to the Congress. And if they don't, they can be put in prison, you know, and, and that's what they're worried about here. That this, this, uh, this statute has teeth in it. It has subpoena power. It has the power to exercise eminent domain to, uh, to if necessary, send U.S. military yep. troops to, them, to their, their company and seize uh, if they've got the crash debris or a, an intact UFO uh, there, that this can be seized by our United States military. Now, let me ask you this. Um, I'm playing devil's advocate for them. Could they say, oh, let's get into gear and let's bury this and let's get this, uh, you know, away from us somehow disjointed from our company and by uh, starting a new LLC or some other corporation or something like that, and then putting all the information that they have on, let's just say they have a crash UAP, their reverse um, engineering it, and then they could just push it all over to this new founded company um, and not be able to, you wouldn't be able to get access to it because you were unaware of it. Is that a possibility of something yeah. like that? Can they no, hide I, it? I, you know, I spent 50 years chasing down these kind of bad guys. I mean, they've tried, okay. you know, the, 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 there's a, there's a book on this all to, you know, they, they follow a particular uh, a plan, an MO where they try to hide stuff and, and, you know, the yeah. just, Department is very adept at this. The, the whole Trump administration, for example, lying, cheating, having double sets of books. People know how to pursue these people, you know, down into their warrants, uh, and that's what we're that's that's what we're doing. The, the New Paradigm Institute actually exists for the purpose of seeing to it that this statute, once it's passed, is actually enforced. You know, we're the mm. we're a, a, an, an entree to the citizens groups around the country to mobilize them to make. The Justice Department, uh, make the courts, uh, make the uh, the president's office, and everybody do their job. That's what we're doing here. The, the, our government is in a is in a serious uh, shape right now because such a, a growing percentage of the population distrust them. The, they they mm -hmm. don't believe that they're doing their job. You know, we've we've set up a democracy and elected these people to do do 
the work for the people, uh, and they've been completely co-opted by corporations now. I mean, and almost everybody knows that. And to, to have them exercising that kind of control uh, over our democratic government in a in a in an issue that is as important as this to our people, that everybody wants to know uh, if, in fact, the, there's an extraterrestrial civilization. Everybody wants to know if they're coming to our planet. Everybody wants to know if we have an opportunity to establish peaceful uh, diplomatic relations with an, an entire extraterrestrial civilization that has the, the potential for assisting us. Uh, and they're not here to help us, you know, to save us from ourselves. But the fact of the matter is they may well know the answers to a lot of important questions that our human yeah. family has been struggling with for, for decades and for centuries to try to figure out. And these people, out of their own personal greed and avarice, uh, are, are trying to conceal this from the American public and the world. A lot of times you see in these movies, you know, these sci-fi movies, the uh, dystopian future that has, is run by corporations and the corporations are controlling the masses and uh, that, that's kind of, you know, when I hear things like this, it kind of like saying, yeah, you know, we, in some ways we are, you know, we are, we head in that way because they have all the power of what they're doing right here. This particular situation is a good example of that, where they can manipulate, you know, people in, in power in our government to change something on their behalf, yes. which I think is, is, is totally, uh, terrible <laughs> well the, re um, the reason the reason that the that the science fiction movies are projecting that is because they they can see that that's what's happening they can see hmm. if you if you project into the future uh, what the dynamics are that you can absolutely establish beyond any reasonable doubt right now you project that uh, along the same algorithm into the future and that's exactly what you get you you get this this complete corporate uh, uh, autocracy you know running the world you know, and that mm. we've got to stop this thing, you know, and that this this provides it. You know, we had not intended to have this be a showdown, you know, and in, in which we were trying to, you know, take on the fundamental issue of the corruption uh, of our American political system through the corporations. Uh, you know, but if, if they want to throw down on this thing, you know, that we, we have probably one of the biggest uh, completely bipartisan coalitions. Uh, in the history of the country around this UFO thing. We've got, as I say, 99% right. of the members of both political parties wanting to get this bill passed. And if we end up discovering that this, this corruption has infected our government so seriously that they're going to try to conceal this secret from us and, and potentially threaten the other members of Congress and threaten their families uh, in order to protect their, their personal greed you know, uh, then this may well be the battleground where where a lot of these things are going to get resolved because uh, we aren't going to stop. I mean, we're going to we're going to mobilize the people. We're going to share information with the people. We're going to help organize the people. We're going to focus on the congressional districts where these corporations have so corrupted the elected representative that they're betraying uh, their their uh, obligations to their people you know, in, in betraying their obligations even to their positions in Congress. You know, you have the head of the Intelligence Committee taking a position that the Intelligence Committee should be denied access to this information. I mean, that's that's a complete defiance of his responsibilities as the chair of the committee. Hmm. hmm. I, I have a, there's a long, let me just post this question. There's a lot of people that uh, I think may want to call in. I'm not really sure. This is a, a long time uh, chat person here. Um, he wants to know, is it wrong for Congress to try to compel the government to disclose when it's distinct? It's distinctly possible that the ETs are forcing the government to cover it up on pain of some terrible punishment to humanity. I don't know what you think about that question, but what do you, well, you know? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> let me say this. It's totally unnecessary for the UFO people to try to, you know, make our, our corporations be corrupt. <laughs> you know, they, they're, they're completely capable of doing this completely on their own. Uh, and everybody knows that, you know, uh, it doesn't require some esoteric theory as to the fact that the UFO people are behind this. 
you know, uh, the, the, these corporations have done this. I mean, you know, you've got you've got the the oil corporations polluting the entire planet, threatening to destroy uh, the entire life generating capacity of our planet. And yet they still won't stop. You know, and you try you try to bring this to the attention of the political representatives and the oil corporations start pen, spending, you know, literally billions of dollars in campaign contributions to the key people to stop them from, you know, interfering with the uh, the profit seeking of the oil corporations. Uh, so the, this is not this is not unique to this particular issue, but it's just that this issue is so profoundly important to so many people. And very importantly, it is it is completely nonpartisan, you know, that, yes. that we have we have organized a coalition of people that is completely bipartisan it's under the point of being nonpartisan uh, to get this done. It's like trying to you know prevent cancer you know, or something. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and these people are blocking us and they're in there. They've they've turned these guys, Mike Turner and Mike Rogers and Mike Johnson uh, and Mitch McConnell have turned them. To the point where they're betraying their country, they're betraying the Constitution. You know, they're they're depriving the Congress of the United States of this information that that we need uh, our representatives to have in order to govern. You know, they're just they're ruining the possibility of developing a, a logical, rational, diplomatic relationship with an entire extraterrestrial civilization. So for their for their own private gain is what they're doing. Do you think there's uh, they're getting a lot of pushback? These four people, you know, the three mics and the Mitch. Yes. Um, do you think they they're getting getting a lot of pushback? Yeah. They are. They are getting a lot of pushback. They're getting pushback. What do you hear the, about that? Yeah. Well, the, the the bottom line is they're getting pushback from the people who actually possess a lot of the information, uh, and they're being uh, kept silent under threats of uh, uh, revoking their national security clearances or punishing them uh, with criminal charges uh, if they if they come public with what they've got but i can tell you the fact of the matter is you know that uh, you know i have i've spent years like for example uncovering the fact that the iran contra uh, the, the iran contra off the shelf enterprise was criminally smuggling cocaine into the united states and providing weapons to the contras in complete defiance of congress you know, we were able to find that out and we were able to get that information revealed. I've never agreed to accept a private, uh, a national security clearance. I'm perfectly capable of getting this information and I have every intention of making it public uh, if they will not cooperate. You know, we are offering them a, a compromise in this bill to set up a process whereby they can have a, a carefully controlled disclosure of this information to the American people and to the world. You know, we're providing safeguards so that they can protect the sources uh, by means of which they they gain information. We're perfectly uh, prepared to protect the, na the genuine national security of the United States. You know, but they're, what they're doing is they're running a risk just like happened in the Pentagon Papers case, which I was one of the main attorneys for the New York Times in that case. You know, in that, uh, that Whitney North Seymour, the United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, who was representing the Nixon administration, they absolutely refused to allow us to publish anything that was in all 47 volumes of those Pentagon Papers. Uh, and they refused to point out to us what, if anything, in those papers they were insisting, if it was made public, would irrevocably damage the national security of the United States. They refused to tell us what it is they were talking about. And so what we did is we got all 47 volumes uh, published by the New York Times. Uh, and we now have the New York Times prepared to publish information that we bring to them you know, from deep inside uh, these structures, we can bring the information to the New York Times. We can bring the information to 60 Minutes. Uh, we can bring the information to the internet and we can make it public. Uh, and if they don't want to have a sound and responsible methodology by means of which the information can be vetted carefully uh, and, and important information that they can convince us ought to be uh, kept secret, if they refuse to do that, then they're going to pay the consequences for it, you know, and I can assure them that I will do everything in my power to make sure they do, you know, and I, I'm going to do everything I can do to make sure that these people, these criminals, you know, uh, go to jail for what they're doing, 
uh, we're, we're offering them uh, amnesty. We've, we've offered in the other parts of the legislation, we've offered amnesty to them. We've offered to, uh, to allow them to come forward uh, and, and provide the information to Congress and have Congress exercise a responsible judgment about how much of this information should be released to the public and pursuant to what kind of a schedule, you know, but they're, mm -hmm. they're still refusing to do it. They won't even allow that to be done. So, I mean, it, you know, that they, they better, they better be careful about what they're doing here. Uh, because, you know, I've, I've spent 50 years in doing this. I've been involved in publishing the, the Pentagon papers. I've been involved in exposing the off the shelf enterprise of the, of the Iran Contra uh, committee people, you know, we've exposed the fact that the Kermagee Nuclear Corporation was uh, providing 98% uh, bomb grade plutonium to Israel and to Iran at the same time. We've done this down through the 50 years. They should realize that this is not a hollow threat that I'm making here. You know, yeah. this is a this is an absolute uh, promise that we will do this if they won't cooperate. Wow. Well, I'm really glad you're on our side. <laughs> um, this, uh, the one thing you mentioned a couple of things about what can be secret, what can be let out. Now, I, I truly think now I may be wrong. You can tell me if I am, but I really think they're going to, going to use the umbrella of national security a lot in this situation to be able to keep things from the public. I understand part of that, certainly when it comes down to, you know, things that would affect national security. But do you think that's what they're going to try to protect everything with? Well, but you'll you'll notice that you'll if you forgive me for saying this, you'll notice that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that you you can't even give an example of what you're talking about, and they don't either. They say, "Oh well, you know, there's something awful could happen here. You could really." I say, "Like what? Like what are we talking about here?" You know, and they go, "Well, you know, I can't tell you because it's it's so it's so uh, threatening and so terrible and uh, and." They are lying sea bags. They've lied openly about this over and over again. They lied about it in the Pentagon Papers. They lied about it in Iran Contra. I mean, Oliver North got right up in front of the Congress and said, "Absolutely, I lied to you." You know, I mean, this was a covert yeah, operation. That. You know, I couldn't tell you. Hmm. You know, uh, and so, so I mean, that we've established a national security state here since the National Security Act of 1947, in which they feel completely authorized to lie to Congress and to lie to the world. You know, and, uh, and it's turned out that over and over and over again, it's on behalf of corruption. And what they've done yeah. is they have devoted themselves. And it says so. If, if people go and look at the 1992 United States Defense Department policy planning guidance document, that was prepared by Dick Cheney, you know, uh, in as the Secretary of Defense for George Bush Senior, uh, and you know Paul Wolfowitz, and uh, and uh, uh, there was a Scooter Libby was in on it. Doug Fife was in on it. There's particular people I know exactly who they are. They they drafted a proposal for maintaining the size of their military budget, even though the Soviet Union had officially agreed to step out of the Cold War and step back and dissolve the Soviet Union. Uh, and they were so frightened about losing their government contracts for military equipment that they designed a, a program for it and openly stated in the classified document that their objective was to maintain the continued privileged access to the strategic raw materials that were needed by our American industry. You know, I mean, they, they said it, you know, in the document. Uh, so we know what it is that they're up to here. Uh, and, uh, you know, that we, we do not want to pull down uh, the pillars of the state, you know, in order to get them off their pedestal. But if they mm. insist upon this, uh, we will, in fact, pull them down, you know, uh, and we don't want to have to do that. We're doing everything that we can reasonably do to, to try to establish a reasonable, uh, controlled disclosure of this information. Uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, that if, they, if they don't leave us any choice at all, uh, and, and it's going to come to a point where it's going to be too late for them, when they come back and say, please, please stop, you know, you're, you're really probing into things where, you know, that something terrible is going to happen. Well, the, something terrible that they think is going to happen is they're going to lose their power. 
<laughs> they're going to mm-hmm. lose their monopoly power uh, over the sources of energy, you know, over the control of Congress. You know, if this information comes out uh, and they can either do this in a, in a gradual, irresponsible way or it will be, uh, you know, uh, unfortunate for them. What can I do as an American or anyone that's listening to the show right now as an American? What what can we do to help this process to make sure that this thing doesn't get killed or try to attempt to stop it from getting killed? Oh, it's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, you can you can go on to the the New Paradigm Institute website, and, and you can you can find the information that tells you exactly who your two United States senators are, exactly who your congressional representative is, uh, and also find on that website the the names of the people that are in charge of these special committees. You know, and what you do is you send out every form of communication that you can. You telephone them. You send them emails. Uh, you you send the you you uh, send them letters. You know. You go to their offices uh, and tell them that you want the Schumer Amendment, uh, which is the the UFO basically controlled disclosure act. Uh, you want this thing passed, and you want it passed intact. You know the way that it is now, along with the subpoena power, along with the authority that it has to to uh, exercise eminent domain to retrieve uh, any type of technology that's been taken by these aerospace industries and trying to privatize it, you know, that, that, these, that this has to be left intact. Uh, and that's just, just yeah, con- contact both of your senators and your congressional representative from your district and tell them that you insist that they maintain uh, the, the Schumer Act in the National Defense Authorization Act. You know, it's, it's a simple, mm-hmm. it's a simple proposition. What, what I'm really saying is that you have to actually be a citizen. <laughs> no? Yes. Actually be yeah. a citizen. Stop being a, just a spectator, you know, standing back watching, wondering what's going to happen here. You know, get on the telephones, you know, send out the emails uh, and, and just swamp these guys uh, with, with the demand that they pass the, pass the Schumer Amendment, period. And what type of we're 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 under a deadline here. This is this is timely, right? We're talking yes. this oh, December, this month, December twenty first. December twenty first. You know they're going to vote on this. You know, uh, yeah. uh, in the you know so we we've, we've got here you know twenty twenty five days or so, you know within which we've got to be able to push back against Mike Turner and Mike Rogers and Michael Johnson and Mitch McConnell specifically these four people. You know who are on the take uh, from the aerospace industry, uh, and it, we've got to we've got to push back against them. And what we have to do is we have to instigate a revolt on the part of the people that are in the Senate and, and House Conference Committee, and a revolt on the part of the people of the majority of the people that are members of the House Intelligence Committee and the House Armed Services Committee, revolt against their leadership. You know, that these leaders mm-hmm. that are there are the ones that have been targeted by the aerospace industry to bribe them, you know, and so that we have to have a, an insurrection, uh, a, a constitutional insurrection against this this corrupt leadership uh, in, in, in its manifesting itself, most especially in the House of Representatives right now. But everybody knows that. Everybody knows that the House of Representatives are in total disarray right now. Mm. They can't even they can't even legitimately pick a, a speaker of the house. You know, they've got this guy, Mike Johnson, who's a I mean, look at everybody just study who Michael Johnson is. He's he's a, he's a complete fundamentalist moron, you know, and there he is in charge of this in charge of the House of Representatives, you know, and he's using that power right now to block uh, the, the American people from being able to find out. Uh, that we're in possession of, of uh, a number of UFOs, and that we're secretly uh, this this deep state is is deeply involved in trying to back engineer this technology to make a weapon system out of it to establish full spectrum dominance over the planet. You know, and it's our opinion that there's only a minority of people in our country who agree with that. <laughs> mm. You know. Uh, and yeah. most of them are in the aerospace industry. 
Now, uh, when you say something like this, do you actually have any evidence that it is a, a, that they are actually trying to back engineer for weaponry? Or is this typically what the Defense Department would do? I no, think sir. it is because the atom bomb, they split the atom and first thing they think of is how to kill people. You know? no, uh, so, no. uh, but I mean, is this speculation or do you have some type of evidence that there might be a weapon? Oh, no, it's, it's perfectly clear because the, the actual effort to, to deal with this issue was inside the, uh, the advanced weapons special access program. <laughs> I mean, that's mm. where they're hiding it, you know. Uh, mm. So it's it's all for all for the attempt to develop an advanced weapon system. Uh, that's that's what they're doing. It's a function of the national security state, you know. That that is, you know, we we've got we've got a mil an annual military budget that is exceeds that of the other top ten nations in the world combined, you know. And and they, and they still keep trying to buffalo everybody into thinking that this is for defense purposes, you know. And yet, you know, we're we're you know over in over in the Ukraine, you know, we're 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 sending billions of dollars of military equipment to bomb the crap out of the Gaza Strip now, you know. We're we're invading the Middle East. Eastern oil fields. We've got military troops that we sent to Afghanistan. We've sent them to, you know, uh, to we've you know supported military dictators all through South America. You know that have been torturing, uh, you know, their people. You know, I mean, the time has come that we've got to come to grips with what what's going on here, uh, and that that these people are now threatening to keep secret the fact that there's an extraterrestrial civilization surrounding us and and open to us participating in a an entire galactic uh, civilization you know in their trying to like so primitive try on some you know island in in the middle of the south pacific you know hmm. nope so yeah okay your internet just did a little so, hit you know, your I'm internet saying, Yes, I'm back, but I'm back. You're, you know, really, the pe people have to really decide whether they're re ready to go to the mats, you know, to get this information. Uh, and, and you know, that I, I think they are. And I'm going to do my very best, uh, based on 50 years of, of working in this area, to, uh, to educate the American people, to let them know exactly what this bill is offering to do, uh, educate the people as to what the whistleblowers are saying, you know, and also to exercise whatever access I have to these potential whistleblowers to offer them a pro bono legal representation to have them come mm. forward uh, and provide the information to the United States Senate Intelligence Committee. You know, that's where the impetus is coming from, is coming out of the Senate Intelligence Committee with uh, Senator Rubio uh, and Senator Warner uh, and other people that are in that that committee saying this is outrageous that the Senate Intelligence Committee doesn't have this information in order to make policy decisions for our country. You know, it's it's an absolute total constitutional crime that is being perpetrated here. And we and we as citizens what? have to stand up for the Constitution and, and protect ourselves. Yeah, I'm going to bring up something right here. Um, I know you have, I'm sure you have seen this. This came out. Uh, whoops, let's see. Okay, I didn't set up this computer to do it. But I'm sure you, um, let's see if it works. Uh, hang on just a second here. Okay, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Nope. Okay, I'll work on this later. But uh, this article came out from the Daily. Whoop! You there? Yep. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can hear me, Danny. But this, Danny, this article came out from the the Daily Mail. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it. Oh, here it is. Yes. Okay, it's actually showing on the screen. That's yeah. So I know uh, is, uh, again, you know, yes, unfortunately, yeah. they 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 can't name any you know, uh, people, which is unfortunate. And I know that's what a lot of people are complaining about. Uh, you know, we don't have any of the names. Uh, how can we be so sure and all that? Um, but mm -hmm. anyway, uh, 
I, I think that this the timing of this thing coming out is kind of uh, interesting when this whole situation is going on and this just happened to come out, you know, at the same time. Yeah. Well, Josh, you know, I've, I've given a long interview to Josh Boswell, uh, you know, just the other yeah. day. Uh, and uh, and uh, we're, we're all working together uh, constitutionally and lawfully to try to bring this information to the American public. You know, and as I say that we, we are going to stop. I mean, we're going to keep rolling this information out uh, and it's going to become more and more intense. There's going to be more and more details provided. And we're eventually going to get to the point where we are going to be naming the names of these people. You know, I mean, that we're we're trying to act responsibly uh, and, and entirely constitutionally. You know, uh, that we, we need to make it clear to the American citizens that we are the good guys. We are the people yeah. that support the American Constitution. We are the people that support getting information to our, our elected representatives, that there is this criminal syndicate that is on the other side of this. Uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to get people, you know, revved up to the point where they're going to hate them or, you know, drag them out of the out of their offices and throw them in the street. You know, I'm just saying that what we have to rise up and mobilize all of our affirmative uh, support for getting this stuff passed and make sure that our government is working for us, you know, or we're going to have to start replacing these representatives. That's what we're going to have to do. Now, I, I've just got permission from the radio station that I can go another uh, 22 minutes or 23 minutes, something like that, or 20 minutes, and uh, which I'd like to do if you're okay with that. And I wondered Great. if you'd be willing to uh, take a couple phone calls from uh, people. I'd oh, yeah, like, sure. I'd like, yeah. So if you're going to call in, the number is uh, 855-472-5483. And please make it uh, a question about what uh, Danny is talking about tonight and not, you know, about anything like a sighting or anything like that. It has to be related to what we're talking about. And uh, uh, so Chanel is standing by and can take your call. And that number, again, it's up on the screen. 855-472-5483. Haven't been able to look at chat uh, too much. Um, so let me ask you this, Danny. Mm -hmm. Is there yes. any publications out there right now that is actually putting out there, I don't care if it's online or in print, the fact that these people in question, the three Mikes and the Mitchell are all, uh, Mitch, are all, uh, you know, have these, funds coming to them for campaign contributions is it out yes. there yeah you could you there there's a the american almanac of politics let's just see where is it uh, let me get let me show you a copy of this uh it's, it's never too far away uh from me uh here it is right here see yeah. there's, there's the thing it's called the american uh, the almanac of american politics Okay, yeah, and you can you can uh, get a copy of it. Uh, you can uh, you can pull it up on on the internet. Uh, and what it does is it, it covers every single person who is a, is a member of Congress, uh, and it tells who their primary funders are. Uh, I mean, they're unabashed about it. You know, the, 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 I mean that for example the, with with uh, Mike Mike Rogers that uh, Lockheed Martin. Uh, is their overwhelming uh, his overwhelming uh, financier, you know, and uh, in his mm -hmm. district is right down next to the Redstone Rocket Missile Range, you know, where where they're they're trying to develop uh, you know a a uh, a technology based on the UFO technology to uh, to design missiles that that go you know so fast that that the Soviet Union cannot mount any kind of a defense against them. You know, for what for what purpose? I mean, for what purpose? Yeah. This is, you know, it, it, at the same time, the administration is, you know, they're they're actually militarily supporting like trench warfare <laughs> going on in the along the eastern boundary of, of the Ukraine. I mean, it looks like World War One. I. I mean, they've got, you know, minefields up and barbed wire up and stuff. I mean, how ridiculous is this getting to be here? You know, the, the American yeah. people have to have to stand up. Uh, and take our government back from these people, 
You know, this is this is ridiculous. So I'm saying that that's you, you go to the Almanac of American Politics and you'll find out who their major funders are. You'll find out how much was spent on their their last election. You know, and some of these some of these guys, they they win their election in these red districts by, you know, 65 to 65 to 70 percent. And yet they still have uh, budgets of you like, you know, six or eight million dollars they're taking in contributions to pay for their elections, you know, and they're, they're winning their elections by 30 to 40 points. You know, it's just, it's just complete bribery is what's going on. We got a couple of calls right now. We have line one and we have William calling from Florida. Uh, William, whoops, what did I do with, let's see, there we go. Uh, William, welcome to the show. William, can you hear us? Okay, uh, Chanel, I'm not hearing William. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. Uh, William, can you hear us? So how about now? Okay, Chanel is working uh, behind the scenes feverishly to try to get this to work. Um, oh, well, I guess we'll wait to see if uh, we hear. We have a couple of callers. Uh, William, when you're there, just speak out. This may be, uh, they were working earlier. <laughs> Live radio, what can you do, right? <laughs> All right. Um, we're not hearing anything. So I'm going to drop the call for right now. And unless uh, unless we start hearing something. All right. Well, we may try it later. We'll see how it goes. And uh, Chanel, hello, William. Are you there, William? Okay, Chanel, it's not going to work, I guess. Sorry about that. Again, I apologize to the listener. And let's uh, drop this out. And so we, we've got about 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, you the things that you're saying that heat stays in okay thanks you know there's uh there's really nothing that anyone can do about this um you can hear me right i can hear you yeah okay wow okay so well, saying, it's not just you and me <laughs> i hope yeah i hope just the, rest the outside world can hear us yeah 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 okay uh the producer is saying she can't hear or see me so i'm not sure what that's that's about but you can right yes i can okay so chanel if you can hear us uh we're not hearing the phone line unless i hear someone now okay all right i'm gonna drop the phone out and i apologize everyone i apologize to the people that tried to call in and we'll be uh they'll be working on that at kgra radio try to fix that so can anyone is there anything someone can do from outside the U.S.? They really can't, right? Well, what, 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 one of the things that we're doing is the New Paradigm Institute, you know, which is based in Washington D.C. You know, we have we have offices right on Capitol Hill. I mean, we are the mm -hmm. the only civilian group that is authorized to have offices inside the federal enclave, you know, on Capitol mm -hmm. Hill. So, I mean, we are we are perfectly situated. You know, I spent 20 years there in Washington, D.C. You know, I was the, the general counsel of the United States Jesuit order uh, in their national social ministry office that dealt with public policy issues there. Uh, and so that we have been given permission to be on Capitol Hill to be able to provide information to the intelligence committees and to the armed services committees and to the uh, the House Oversight Committee and others to enable them to maintain this type of a nonpartisan, bipartisan support for this bill. That because we think we think this is an extraordinarily important opportunity to try to get past some of this extraordinary tribalism that's going on here. You know, of every single issue that comes up, having to have a, a Republican position and a Democratic position, the red team against the blue team. Yeah. This is completely dysfunctional. Uh, what we're saying is, look, at this this issue is so nonpartisan and so bipartisan that we have been trying to present an opportunity 
to our political parties and to our government uh, to come back together again to support this. You know, as as uh, President Nixon said in a, a slightly different context at the UN, he said, you know, that the most important thing that could possibly bring all of our people together is to realize that there's an extraterrestrial civilization here, you know, and that we are human, we're all human beings on this planet. Uh, you know, we all live on a planet that is a, a, a rare planet that is able to gestate life. Uh, and that for that reason, it's attracted a lot of attention uh, inside the galaxy. And, uh, and we need to preserve it. In fact, the matter is in a substantial plurality of the instances where people say that they've actually had any direct person-to-person -person contact with the occupants of the UFO vehicles, that there are two things that they keep saying over and over again. Number one, you've got to get rid of your nuclear weapons programs, uh, that they're threatening the entire destruction of your planet. Uh, and and to poison the life-giving uh, capacities of your planet. And secondly, you've got to stop polluting your planet with petroleum. You know, that, that you're, you're polluting your planet uh, and contaminating it, you know, and you're going to ruin the entire uh, climactic system of your planet. You know, these are two things that they say over and over and over again. People keep saying, why aren't they down here helping us? Why, why don't they why don't they give us an alternative source of energy? You know, what, what they're saying is that, you know, that they're trying to, to help uh, without intervening uh, in our in our uh, our whole evolution here. You know, uh, now I, I don't want to go wildly speculating and I have never wildly speculated about what all their motives are or why they don't reveal themselves more directly or why don't they you know, uh, give us uh, direct access to some technology that would provide clean energy for our planet. You know, I don't, I don't know what the answers to those questions are, but I do know that if we're going to get the answer to these questions, we have to have our elected representatives put into possession of the information about them, you know, and that is being, uh, is being uh, squirreled away by these private corporations. Uh, in in relationship to some weird deep state uh, you know operation that's going on here uh, that was created apparently in 1947 right after Roswell by President Truman that he apparently uh, appointed a group of people made up of American business people and bankers and uh, and some military officials and intelligence uh, officials uh, to the point where they where they have basically captured uh, the governing power of our country, you know, with regard to this important mm -hmm. issue. And you can bet other issues as well. Uh, and mm -hmm. so the, what, what we're proposing is that this opportunity of the people who are so interested in trying to find out the answer to one of the most important and most profound questions that face our entire human family as a species, that this ought to mobilize us and motivate us to try to cure this problem of corporate corruption that we have on our planet right now, that we've got to take, we've got to take control back of our governing structures. And we ought to do it in the context of getting access to this information. We have to demonstrate that we're worthy of participating in a peaceful way uh, with our neighbors in our galaxy. You know, if we're going to get access to figuring out how to come and go from their cultures, to learn from their cultures, what might be of benefit to us, you know, we're going to have to demonstrate a responsible willingness on the part of our citizenry to stand up to these corporate forces on our planet uh, and take back our constitutional authority to govern ourselves. That's what this is all about. Hmm. Well, um, I just heard from Chanel. She wants to try the caller again. <laughs> so here it goes. We'll see what happens. All right. So uh, we have, I think it was uh, from, boy, William from Florida. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you? Yes, it's working. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You have ahead, a question William. for our guest? Yeah. I, I, I do. Danny, I, I've been a long follower of you. I support your endeavors 100%. Um, I would just tell you from personal experience, and I think that's the best I can, way I can say it, is that way too much information is overclassified. That's a fact. Yeah, right. Uh, I know that, a lot of other people know that. But here's my question to you. 
what do you think should be made public that the public has the right to know because it's such public significance versus what should be kept private? Well, let me answer the first part of that first. You know, I think that that clearly we should be informed that there is a, an extraterrestrial civilization uh, here in our galaxy, that there are as many as five million other uh, highly intelligent, highly technologically developed, uh, but non-human uh, species in our galaxy, uh, that we need to be informed about that. Uh, we need to know how many of them have, have developed uh, interplanet, interstellar space travel, uh, how many of them have come to our planet, uh, what, if anything, their agenda might be uh, with regard to our planet, you know, what steps can be taken by our citizenry to establish a peaceful and productive and cooperative relationship uh, with the, the members of this extraterrestrial civilization, you know, uh, what what can what can we do to preserve uh, our own integrity, our own sovereignty, our our own agency over our own uh, civilization, uh, and, and still become a cooperating participant in this extraterrestrial civilization? You know, these are these are things that we need to know, and we need to have conversation about these things. And and the problem is is that until such time as the people are notified by authoritative sources that this is the fact, people are going to continue to not pay attention to it. Uh, they're going to keep on thinking, well, you know, uh, it, we don't know for sure whether it's true or not. Uh, but the fact is 80% of the people in the country are convinced that UFOs are real. You know, 80% of the people believe they're extraterrestrial. You know, uh, but they until such time as our elected representatives are willing to come forward and share this information with us, people are going to spend their time, you know, focusing on much more short term objectives that they have in their lives. Uh, and that we we need to prepare for this. We, we, we do not want to be uh, shocked and stunned uh, by the revelation of the fact that there's such another civilization here. Uh, by them having to kind of intervene in some way uh, to protect our planet from being destroyed by a thermonuclear war uh, um, by, by ourselves, and that we don't want to have them have to intervene to stop us from destroying our planet with global climate change uh, by being attached to one particular form of generating our electrical energy. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to have a, such a, an intervention be necessary. Uh, so that's we need to have the information that is going to adequately convince the overwhelming majority of our people that this is true. So that's the answer to the first part of your questions. What are some of the things that need to definitely be communicated to our people? The second part of your question is, you know, what kind of things might need to be secret? You know, we have identified in this bill here some of the things we, we don't need to know the names of a particular official. Uh, you know, who has been guilty uh, of, uh, of destroying the lives of other people. You know, we don't need to know the names of, we don't have to, you know, extract a pound of flesh from the people who've been involved in this covert operation to keep this secret all this time. A substantial majority of them are dead now. You know, it's been going on for 75 years, but there are people, without any doubt at all, there are people that are alive today who have committed crimes uh, in, in order to try to protect this information and keep it secret so that other people can make, you know, gross private profits uh, off of the effort to back engineer this stuff. And they are guilty, as I pointed out, of being a federal criminal racketeering enterprise, you know, uh, that, that it meets all the criteria for this. You know, and we we prosecuted the off the shelf enterprise of the of Oliver North and his people, you know, and we we sustained it with a special prosecutor getting appointed. You know, he he filed criminal charges against them, asserting that they were engaged in the very criminal racketeering enterprise that we identified. You know, and G. Robert Blakey, who is the one who was the chief counsel for the Senate Judiciary Committee that drafted the Federal Criminal Racketeering Act. You know, he said that that was the most effectively pleaded 
criminal RICO statute uh, case he'd ever seen. So we're perfectly capable of doing that, of laying out the details, you know, as a special prosecutor of these people. And we will insist upon doing that uh, if they continue to push back against our being able to mobilize our political representatives to take constitutional action to protect ourselves in this information uh, and get it to us. You know, if they if they're going to force us to do this, you know, we will have to get an administration into power, you know, in 2028. You know, it's it's a too short a term now to deal with it in the 2024 election, you know, which is threatening mayhem in itself coming up. But in 2028, we're going to start working right from if they don't allow this statute to be inserted in passed into law in the National Defense Authorization Act here in December, we're going to mount a, a, a five-year campaign uh, that is going to culminate in 2028 in putting in a, uh, a new administration, because there's going to be a new administration in any event, even if, if Biden wins in 2024, you know, uh, or if, if Trump were to win, uh, he's already served a term that neither one of them can serve more than another term. So we know that there's going to be a new administration in power in 2028. What we're going to do is mobilize our American people and put an administration into power in 2028, not only in control of the White House, but in control of the Senate and in control of the House of Representatives that is going to make this information public, uh, okay? Uh, and that uh, that's what we're going to do. Now, the question that you ask as to what might be some of the things that shouldn't be revealed, as I've said, we don't need to know the individual names of individuals who may have committed some of these crimes. Uh, we're willing to grant amnesty to them. This can be done uh, confidentially, even if necessary, uh, through the defense or through the Justice Department. Uh, we don't, but there's very little. There's very little uh, uh, relating to this issue that is legitimately classified uh, to protect the national security uh, of the United States. Technology. I'm sorry, you don't think that technology should be classified? Classified why? Well, we're not the only ones that have this. So what? I mean, that's like saying we ought to we ought to we ought to keep confidential the uh, secrets of electricity because we don't want anybody else knowing about it, you know? Uh, what what's the uh, the what we have to have is a treaty that we all agree prohibits anybody in any country, anywhere, utilizing the technology to develop any kind of a weapon system. You know, that, that's the key. What we, have, we have to have a treaty uh, that, that prohibits this. You know, if, the, if it's available to other people to... Country, Pardon? I don't know how you do that with communist countries. With communist countries? What do you mean? Russia, China. How, how do you get them to enact a treaty about this exotic systems that they may or may not have that they're trying to develop into weapons just like we are? Well, what, what, what I think you don't understand is that the fact is that the Soviet Union and China decades ago had agreed that if the United States would agree to disassemble its nuclear weapons, it will disassemble all of its nuclear weapons. They will agree not to have any kind of nuclear weapon systems at all. You know, they've agreed to that to begin with. It isn't the communist countries that were causing the problem here. It was the United States. The United States insisted upon having nuclear weapons so that they could force their will across the world. You know, that's what we've got. That's the problem we've got here. That what we have to do is have the United States be willing to put forth a treaty that is enforceable to prohibit anybody in the world from using any of this technology for weapons purposes. Now, the, the problem is that they want to protect, they want to give special advantage to our American corporations to be able to use it even for private purposes and for civilian purposes. That's not a legitimate interest on the part of our national security. We don't have to, we don't have to have monopoly control over the natural resources of the planet. You know, uh, we don't even have to have as 5% of the population of the planet. We don't have to consume 40% of all the natural resources of the planet every year. That's not a national security interest. That's just private greed and avarice. You know, we, we need to have an entire different view of our human family as one united human family on our planet. 
uh, and we need to share the resources. We need to, you know, we need to have the peaceful development of all of these different kind of resources that we have. You know, we, we don't have to lord it over the rest of the planet. We don't have to have a, a, a national defense budget every single year. There's 10, there's, there's bigger than the 10 other countries in the, the world. You know, we don't have to do that. You know, and now this may this may require kind of a, a profound change in attitude, but that's exactly what the reality of the extraterrestrial civilization offers us: is that it can completely and profoundly transform our entire perception of ourselves as a human species, as one unified family that can participate in a cooperative way peacefully. Uh, and, and I think that the treaty. The treaty banning the use of any of the UFO technology for any weapons purposes at all is a very important first step. And it will be one of the major planks in the platform of a new 2028 administration here in our United States government. It has to be. We have to take this step because we've been the bully on the block, you know, uh, for the last 75 years. Uh, that's that's what we're doing. I mean, and all you have to do is think about it. I mean, you could say, Oh, well, what about, you know, Putin and Russia that invaded the Ukraine? I mean, all you have to do is back up and do a little homework and discover that there was an agreement made. We were personally involved at the Jesuit headquarters, involved in meeting with Gorbachev to get him to agree to step back from the from this, the Cold War and, and agree to step back and, and release all the, the republics of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And there was a specific promise that was made by George Bush Sr. and and uh, and James Baker the third to 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 uh, Gorbachev that we would never try to recruit any of the Soviet republics into NATO. It was a specific promise that was made. But as soon as Dick Cheney got into power, uh, along with with just Bush Jr., you know, they began one by one to start recruiting those republics into NATO and putting nuclear missiles into those areas. These, these are things that you need to know about here, you know? Uh, and so that it isn't that, you know, that there's this horrible threat of Russia attacking us across the ice caps. You know, I mean, that, that went out back in the 1950s. You know, what we have to do is have a treaty that prohibits anybody and everybody from making any kind of use of the technology to develop any kind of a weapon system. And we can enforce that if the United States will abide by it. I'm sure that we can get China to agree to that, and we can get Russia to agree to it. We can get every country in the world to agree to it. Well, thank you, William. Uh, we actually have people uh, standing by to uh, to talk to you, and one of them is, uh, let's see, we have Dave from Toronto. Dave, welcome to the show. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for calling in. You have a question for Danny. Yes, um, we've heard a lot of very bold claims from some very reputable people. And my question is, when is the general public going to see some more substantive evidence of what's going on, pictures or video or even more than that? Well, they're, they're going to be, they're, they're either going to be provided this information pursuant to the, to the UAP uh, Controlled Disclosure Act, uh, pursuant to a specific uh, uh, calendar you know, that there's a specific time I could go into it in some detail, but they've set forth the details of how that information needs to be unfolded, uh, or it's going to be undertaken in a in an unmore regulated way. Uh, and we're going to bring forth more and more whistleblowers. We're going to be presenting them to the Senate Intelligence Committee. We're going to be providing them to the, uh, the House Oversight Committee. What we're going to do is we're going to continue to function just as though this law were passed. OK, and we're going to provide this information to the, the members of Congress uh, and we're going to have them exercising their own judgment as to what what of this information needs to be made public. They're going to agree to hold public hearings where witnesses like David Grush are going to come forward and under oath are going to testify under oath in open hearings uh, about what the information is that these these major aerospace industries don't want revealed. Uh, and we're going to start revealing it in, in a choreographed manner, step by step. We're going to keep on coming with this information, you know, and it's either going to be under a controlled process or it's going to be under a less controlled process. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. So they can take this to the bank. Wow. Great. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate 
Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. We have uh, we have one more caller, and that is Penny from the UK. Penny, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Sheehan, for your passionate contribution to everything to do with this. It's amazing. Um, my question is, please, um, if the um, Special Access Program NDAs um, were signed in uh, organisations within the government that are committing unconstitutional acts, does that actually render them null and void? Um, because um, as uh, an organization as an organization they're sort of um, committing corporate treason of some sort towards the constitution yes that that uh, we we could in fact take an action to get them declared void because it's a contract contrary to public interest there's an entire entire doctrine in contract law uh, that prohibits uh, uh, forcing a person to sign a contract that is fundamentally contrary to the public interest, you know, and that the, and, and I've offered to free of charge represent the people who are in possession of information that should be disclosed, that is being illegally classified uh, and being kept from the Congress and kept from the public uh, to defend them uh, against such charge. That's why I represented Lou Elizondo, and that's why I've represented others. You know, that uh, the fact of the matter is that this information is going to be uh, made available uh, and that we're going to argue, make the arguments that, that Congress should be allowed to, to bring forward this information. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. The answer is yes. The, the, the bona fides of those non-disclosure agreements uh, can be vitiated uh, if, in fact, it can be demonstrated that the that the people who imposed those non-disclosure agreements on those individuals were engaged in unlawful criminal activity and unconstitutional activity. That's our position. That's incredible. Anything Thank you so much for my question. Anything else, Penny? I, I'd just like to hear your accent so we can. The only tiny question I was going to ask is, um, what sort of areas of um, personal development does Mr. Sheehan feel that we should be um, attempting to sort of engage in our in our sort of daily existence that that could help us with this this initial um, sort of baby steps with the NHI and and how to um, realistically present our best side if we're going to have this extraordinary conversation. Well, the, 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 it's a very simple answer to that question. The, the most important thing that anyone listening to this program can do is they can go on Amazon uh, uh, books and order the two volume set by Richard Dolan of UFOs in the national security state. Uh, and what it's, it's just filled with actual U.S. official government internal documents that detail the history of the UFO phenomenon and the development of a completely unlawful, illegal activity on the part of the deep state of our American government in, uh, in unlawfully destroying the lives of people who have been attempting to peacefully and constitutionally get answers to these questions. You know, it's easy. Richard Dolan, two volumes of the UFOs in the national security state and just bring it home and read it. Read both volumes of this and you will become a, an expert on what the status is of the, of the actual internal government documents already showing what's been going on. I mean, there are letters there from the commanding officers of the United States Air Force to the president saying, we know that these are real. We know that they're, they're metallic craft uh, that are flying at these outrageous rates. Uh, we're unable to, to uh, do anything about this. And we think that there needs to be a major program developed in the government to figure out who these, these people are that are flying these things. You know? And, and that, was, that was like 50 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the documents are there. It's simple. You know, now, and so just tell yourself this for every person who is listening to this who has not read those two volumes, 
don't complain. Don't complain uh, about how hard it is to get something done if you won't even bother reading the two books. You know, there's just two volumes of it and you just go through them and you'll be familiar with the different kinds of sightings, the different kinds of evidence, the internal documents acknowledging that they know about this, you know, and you will then be fully equipped to talk with your fellow citizens, your friends, your neighbors, your fellow family members, your relatives to say, look at, uh, there's this, there's this two volume work of all the internal U S government documents showing that this stuff is true and it's going on. Uh, here, let me have a conversation with you about this. We have to take control of our own government, okay? We need to do that by being educated about the facts. And you can get those from Richard Dolan's two-volume work, U the UFOs and the National Security State. That's a simple answer to your question, Penny. Thank you, thank you Penny. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. All right, thank you. So um, I'm going to have to ask Richard for a commission on that. <laughs> He'll sell some books. But anyway, uh, we have about eight minutes left and uh, that's it. There was another caller, but they dropped off. And uh, so uh, actually we could probably wrap the show here in like three minutes. So I think you've really given out all the information that I think that, you know, the people that want to help will do something. And uh, I really thank you for your your work. And, um, you know, it's funny, I sent you an email. Oh, we do have another person. I am so sorry about that. <laughs> He's been waiting all this time. Okay. So we will bring, uh, let's, uh, let's cancel that wrap and we'll bring Leo hey. in. Hey, uh, Leo. Leo. Leo, how are you? Hey, I'm David. Hey, Danny. I had the pleasure of meeting you a year ago in Pasadena. So thanks for your attention on doing the right thing and fighting to do uh, kind of good for our human family. I had two questions. Uh, the first one was, how has this slipped through the cracks from the checks and balances of other governments, nation states, uh, religious bodies like the Vatican, uh, which is I'm, sh I'm sure filled with so many individuals, independent thinkers, intellectuals, and just humans like us. Why, what is this organization and how has it uh, how has it managed to kind of build an alliance to kind of pull the wool over everyone's eye, right? That is my first question. Well, uh, actually, I guess what I say is that that it hasn't. <laughs> the real the reality is is that eighty percent of all the people in the country believe it's true, you know, and they believe they're extraterrestrial. That, uh, that if you go around the world, you know, a substantial a plurality of regular people uh, are sure this is true. The, the, the challenge is with the elite. Uh, and the, the answer to that part of the question is, why don't the elite acknowledge that this is true? Uh, and the answer to that is, is that the elite are worried that if this information is made available to the regular people, it's going to undermine the kind of authority that these elite people have, uh, that the people are going to look through them to trying to figure out what the extraterrestrial people know about if they've, they've existed. You got to get understand the, the, the universe is 13.7 billion years old, you know, uh, and, uh, our whole planet is only 3.5 billion years old. So you got 10 billion more years of other civilizations uh, potentially existing. Uh, in our our universe and uh, in our galaxy, and so that if you have if you have a, a, a number of civilizations that are even one billion years, not ten billion years, but one billion years more advanced than we are, uh, and have had all of that time to philosophize and theologize uh, and uh, and uh, and develop uh, technologies, etc., you know. That, that the the onslaught of that type of information uh, threatens the elite uh, on our planet who believe that they need to maintain themselves as the people that the vast majority of people in the world trust to help make decisions uh, about how our human family should be operating. And if you look around the world right now, I guess you can ask that famous question, 
how's that doing for us? You know, how, how well mm. how well are we doing at that right now? You know, uh, so the 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 this the elite group of people in the academic world and in the financial world, the corporate world, they're all worried about losing control uh, over the resources of the planet. And so that's what's keeping them from doing it. And they're in charge of most of the media and they're in charge of the uh, universities. They're in charge of the educational uh, processes on the planet. Uh, and so that they're very reluctant to to give up uh, their unique position and positions of the at the the uh, the pyramid of all uh, authority uh, on the planet. Uh, so that that's the answer to that one uh, as to why as to why this this they've been thinking that they're pulling the wool over the eyes of the vast majority of people, but they're not because the most of the people more or less believe it now. But they, but they're still they've been trained, the, the average people have been trained to believe that in order to really act on something, you need to be told by somebody in a position of authority that it's true. Now, that's why it's so important that the New York Times made the decision back in December of 2017 to put, to put out on a front page story the fact that they didn't put out the fact that there's UFOs and they're real and that, you know, that they've been coming and going. What they did is that there's a secret program inside the Pentagon uh, that is being lied about. Uh, so therefore they think there's some kind of a problem here. And what that did is open the gates for the people coming forward and giving more information to assert that in fact, there is, uh, a, an extraterrestrial civilization and they are coming here, uh, in the UFO vehicles. Uh, and they are engaging in having face-to-face -face encounters with our, our human family in attempting to convey to us, that we have to get rid of our nuclear weapons programs, and we also have to stop polluting our planet in, in imposing global climate change on our planet that is threatening to destroy the life-generating capacity of our unique planet here. The, 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 these are things that people believe, but we're right on the brink right now of enlisting more and more and more of the people who are in the traditional elite governing class of our, of our, our human species into acknowledging this. That's what this bill is all about. This bill is the, the codification at the present state of the development of this movement of how far we've reached up into the power structure to get significant portions of the power structure to agree uh, that the time has come to make this information available. And what's happening is we're running into this tiny, tiny minority of people inside the elite who are so desperate to stay in control uh, of this information that they're blocking the democratic process and they're blocking the constitutional form of our government from functioning. Uh, and that's why this bill is so important to get passed. And we've got to roll out every single resource that we have at our disposal to get this law passed. And to we've only got you know 25 days to do it. So everybody, uh, even if you're from another country, you need to contact these people uh, in Congress and say, the whole world is watching. The whole world is watching, you know, and that you're embarrassing yourself by by failing to demonstrate that democracy really works. If you want to make the best arguments that you can against the ones that William was talking about, the communist countries, you know, that show them that democracy can really work. <laughs> That's what yeah. you need to do. And that we're willing to I, give up power. We're willing to give up the, the kind of unilateral power to dominate the whole planet uh, at this extraordinarily important moment as a, as a gesture for bringing our human family together. Yeah, excellent. I'm so sorry, Leo, I had to cut the, uh, the second question because we are plumb out of time. Uh, Danny, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure and I hope to have you back on the show again someday. For sure. Okay. All right. And good we'll luck with all the efforts. I do appreciate them. To tell them to contact their Congress people right now. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Sure. All right, everyone. We will be back next week with Kevin Wright. And uh, actually, he will be continuing a little bit more of this talk. And don't forget, we have Crossfire on Thursday night on this uh, YouTube channel. I'm going to be administrating it. And that will be at uh, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much, everyone. And remember to keep your eyes to the sky. Mm -hmm.